This is the last van build video for a while. After 40 days of hard graft, this van is finally in a state that I can start using it properly. I've just got a few finishing touches to do. I think I may have even solved my energy problem and that's all thanks to EcoFlow, who are also the sponsor of today's video. But first, let's get these finishing touches done. Today I've got a lot of niggly jobs to do and I'm gonna start off with building a face for this here, carpeting the back and underneath as well. I just, just, and just tidying it up really. I'm also gonna attempt to fix this. I do need to drop it down. I think I've worked out how to sort of get it a bit more level from last week. If my calculations are right, I can drop that end there, which should actually level it out quite nicely. But I think once that's done, other than painting this and getting the doors up, as far as the way the van looks, it's pretty much there. I need to sort of work out what kind of tiles I'm gonna put on here, whether I go for the, the adhesive ones that I used in the last van or whether you know I find some way of fixing normal tiles to the wall without the sort of grout splitting and everything because that does look absolutely terrible. Uh, the main things is I've made a sort of a really savage template just to get these curves right. Um, when you build a front for this, it's a lot easier to build your templates out of cardboard rather than holding up a piece of wood and scribing. You can stick bits on the end. So at the moment, the main lines, the only main lines that I really need is that curve there, which I've got, this line here, and then this part here as well. Because once I've cut that, I can then scribe the bottom one based on how low down this uh, piece of rubbish is hanging there. But I'm gonna do this in two parts. It's kind of the same way as I did the bed front, if you remember that. I'm gonna build this side, put it up, and then make the other side. That way I can scribe both sides without having too many problems. It's getting windy and rainy. Once you've got your template marked out on your piece of wood, always use your sort of square edge as a guide as well to make sure that everything else is square off that line. And then, uh, and then it's just about cutting it out. Put wooden plates up along here so that when this sits on there it's got a nice flat surface for me to then screw this into the wood this side over here i was thinking i could just use the template again but it's going to be slightly different because i'm just literally going to bring it down to this unit and then underneath there's no point in scribing against that wall because this unit up here i have an end piece on it anyway so and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut out nice square opening here so that I can get in and out anything I need whenever I need it. Like everything when I uh, attempt to do anything on this van it just started lashing it down with rain so I'm not, I don't want to go outside and get all my wood wet and all my tools wet by cutting up bits of wood so I'm going to start carpeting in here. It's pretty straightforward I'm going to use the same carpet that I've used on the sides here. I'm going to carpet this beam just so that you can't see that white when you're looking. We're going to carpet the back there and the bottom as well just to stop things from sliding around. Once that's done I'll then do my finishing touches with this bit of the template, get it cut, get the get the opening cut out in this as well and then I'll do the other side. It's always the weather that ruins everything. Now you probably can't see that but well, it's just very dark. Okay, so I've covered this. This will get fronted with the panel. 
I've still got to uh, do the bottom here, which I'm going to clean out and then just stick carpet down. But the thing that I've sort of come to realise is that all these little gaps here, I'm going to have to run a piece of ply along the top here just to make sure that the last thing I want to do is end up losing stuff down between these gaps. So just say I chuck something up there and it's small. If it falls down there, I ain't never getting it back. Come up with a better idea. I've got this foam that used to be on the bench there and I'm just going to cut a foam plate out to go in between these bits because it's a lot lighter. I might as well uh, use what I've got and save weight. Ta-da, it's not pretty, but it's a genius idea. And now I can literally put the carpet that's gonna go along here and just wrap it around there. Nice and easy. It stopped raining. I've pretty much carpeted everything I wanted to. This is all sort of hanging down over the top, but this is the beauty of having something to go over the top is you're not gonna see any of this. So it makes it a lot easier to be a bit more sloppy. One of the benefits of like carpeting this is that once that carpet goes over there, make it look so much better because it just gets rid of all the sort of like little imperfections. I think it's going to look really good when it's done. I just need to do this side now. La la la. La la la. Ba ba. Ba ba la ba la ba. Ba ba ba. I kind of messed my first scribe up. Full disclosure like I always do on this channel. So. I'm gonna do this part in two sections. So I've got this small part here, which is just the finishing part. And then we're gonna have this up there. The only reason why I'm doing it like this is because like I said, I messed up the first one. I could have just made out that I, I did it really easily and hidden it, but I'm not that kind of guy. When things like this happen, you've got to kind of stand back and look at it. I'm not sure, but it kind of looks to me like it's dipping in the middle. Right there. I mean, the thing is, once the carpet's on, all the little imperfections, you, you know, you, you won't be able to really notice them, but do I look really orange today? Now, is that any better? Now I just look really blue. Hang on. Now I look a little bit purple. Anyway, that'll do for now. So once the carpet's on it, you're not really gonna notice the imperfections quite as badly. However, you still kind of have to get it right. Because if you don't, it's still gonna look shocking. Right. That looks better to me. I'd say we're good to go. Now all there is to do is carpet the bleeding thing. Okay, that's all of them done. Now we assemble. They obviously look better on the front than they uh, than they do on the back. <laughs> okay, I think I timed that well. It's just started hammering it down. Do you know what? I'm really sorry. It's so dark in it. You can't even see what I'm doing. This is the problem. You buy dark carpet, and you can't actually see. Oh, yeah. So looking at this now, I'm 100% not happy with it because there's a lip here and that actually is not level. If we stand back, you can see this side here nice and level and then there it kind of slopes down. So that panel needs to come back out. Now I know what you're thinking. Yes, I said this van was pretty much ready to go. And you're thinking, well, Sean, 
you've not sorted out this door yet. And that's a simple fix. I just need to replace the wood, get it painted. You don't need to see that. And you're also probably thinking, well, Sean, you haven't actually wired up the 240 volt electrics yet or got the solar sorted so that actually charges the leisure battery. But that's because I think I've come up with a solution. And this is my solution. This is the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. Let me just explain to you what my thinking is. I've been using this now for the last couple of weeks to charge up my leisure battery. I've got a remote charger that I've been plugging into this just to charge up the leisure battery so I can continue using everything in this van. And it just dawned on me, whilst I'm struggling with everything I've installed in this van, why don't I actually, why don't I just hardwire in the Delta 2 Max? This pretty small box does everything that this does and all of that and more. It has four USB charging ports, two of which are fast charge, and two USB-C ports. And then on the other side, you've got four AC outlets, a car socket outlet, and above there is where you would plug it in to charge the power station. And it has two inlets for two solar panels. And the maximum charge from solar power you can actually put into this is 800 watts. And as I have a 300 watt solar panel on the roof, we're gonna hardwire from here straight into my into my solar disconnect switch which is that one right there so essentially what that means is i can just have this getting topped up all the time from the solar panel i've got on the roof and it can run everything in the van so all of my 12 volt appliances i've got in this van the lights the fan the fridge but to be honest i'd probably have that running off 240 if i'm if it's going to be running off this anyway that can all still go through the fuse box which is which i've mounted on the van and then that can literally go into the car socket on here and it should be able to power the whole van. And I don't really know why I didn't consider this in the first place. Maybe if I was gonna do it again, I wouldn't have bothered with any of this and I just would have hardwired in one of these. Because the Delta 2 Max is powerful enough that it should be able to just run everything comfortably. And then I can just recharge it from the solar and not even think about it. And everything's controllable through their app as well, which makes it 100% easier. And as the Max Air fan, when it's on full pelt, only draws 60 watts. And the car socket on the Delta 2 Max has a maximum of 126 watt draw. That means I should be able to run the fan and the lights at the same time without any problems. And if I ever get to the point where I'm like, do you know what, I need more power, you can literally just join it onto an additional battery. It just plugs in there, and then if you want another one of these or one of their add-on batteries, you can literally just plug it straight in and you've doubled your capacity. And there she goes, it is now charging the leisure battery. And what a stupid way that I've been looking at this. Why have I been worrying about a system that I can't seem to get working when I've had this and I can literally just use this to completely run the van Instead, I've been using it to charge the leisure battery, which the solar should be doing anyway. And really, I can just take a cable from here and plug it straight into there and it'll take care of itself. I mean, not to mention that if I ever have a few cloudy days and there's no solar coming into the van, I can plug this into the mains. I can literally take it back into the house, plug it into the mains, and charge it that way. And if you charge it from your AC outlet at home or from your electric hookup, you can actually charge it in 1.6 hours, which is pretty fast. But as I said, the AC power of this, the pure sine wave is 2,400 watts, but it does have surge power of up to 4,600 watts. So for what I'm gonna be using it for in this van, it should pretty much do everything that I need it to. The Delta 2 Max comes with a five-year warranty. It will do 800 cycles. It will probably outlast my van. But look at it, it can fit perfectly into here, like this. Got all of the controls on the front here. Not that I'll need to get to them at the front because I can control it through the app. Plug in these extensions for my outlets in the van. And then I've got full use to my sockets in the van. Simple. It's also gonna take up a lot less space. All of this, so there's your battery, all of that is in this unit. Plus this bad boy as well, which is really heavy. So it just seems like a much simpler idea and a much simpler design. Part of me wants to just rip all this out now and just install this and just start living my life and enjoying the van. But then there's another part of me 
that says, well, this whole setup costs twice of what this cost, so should I still give it a chance? But I think the long and short of it is no. Now, if you are looking to power your autumn adventure, you can save up to £900 from the 15th of September. And if you click the links in my code, you get an additional 5% off as well. And thank you to EcoFlow again for sponsoring this video. But that's enough for today. I'm going to come back tomorrow and finish this. I was expecting like to get loads done today and that's pretty much taken, well it has taken all day. So tomorrow's another day, I'll see you in the morning. It's another day and I'm going to uh, get this one trimmed back a bit. So I actually worked out, even if I follow along the, the level line, you see how this roof line in here isn't level? So I think that's why this unit isn't level so rather than uh, follow the level line which means that you actually see this underhang from the lining what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of go somewhere in between and I've marked it on here where I need to bring it up to so it's about a finger from there to that side at an angle I'll cut that I'll re-carpet it and um, hopefully it will look a lot better the problem is when I had it up there before I carpeted it I wasn't looking at that line I was looking at the square opening to make sure that that actually looked like it worked Schoolboy error, don't do what I do. And uh, let's see, oh God, this is really glued on here. At least we know this glue works, right? Yeah, so don't do what I do, but everything's fixable. It's not 100% perfect, but it's 100 times better than it was. And we're still following that roof lining. All right, well now that's out of the way, I'm gonna attempt to remedy this from the mess up last week. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a spacer at the end and just see if I can drop it down to the level that I need it dropped down to, just to see if that actually fixes anything. And if it does, then I'll screw it back up, easy peasy. And I'm also gonna replace this fin ply that I've got here with some nine mil, just to take that sort of, that wave out. Okay, so here's my theory, okay? Last week, when I fitted this, it was too high at this side, right? And it was about four centimeters or 40 mil out. So this is 40 mil. So what I'm gonna do, chuck a spacer up the top there to drop this down, okay? And then that should then level out this part and then sort, sort all of it out, hopefully. But first thing to do is to drop it down to see what it looks like. If there's any gaps between this and the, and the slats, then I'll just leave it how it is, but I've been losing sleep over it. <laughs> right, so here's why it's not gonna work. So I've slipped my bit of wood up behind here. Where I've scribed it, there's a gap there now. And look at that monstrosity up there. I mean, I could replace this top beam here and start again, but I could change it, but I just, it wasn't bad enough before for me to, ha to rip it all out and do it again. But everything's changeable. Come a couple of years in the future, if it's still really annoying me, I will change it. But for now, I need to get this van finished. So now I'm gonna take all these bits that I've just taken off from underneath and use these as a template, I've numbered them all and uh, marked which side is the uh, war so that I know where the scribe is and uh, get them cut out of nine mil ply. So that, like I said before, that will take that sort of wave out of the cabinets that we had last week. And then after that, I'm painting it. I'm gonna paint that. And then that's done other than the doors, which I can do at any point. This weather is really starting to annoy me. Ugh, like a glove. Well, I mean, it should fit because I used the other one as a template. But that, in my opinion, is a lot cleaner. Also made a little hole here for my, uh, for this switch. Uh, 
Right, well that's that two coats I think that's uh, I think that's enough once it dries properly and I come back to it if it looks really patchy I'll just give it another coat now that was a little bit of a mismatch video got a lot done it's getting to the point of the build now that it's all these little things that sort of bring it all together slowly they just take a little bit longer the final touches are everything you may notice I've got a, a support on my arm it's a long story I'll explain later as far as this goes, I'm really happy with how it came out. Kind of feels like a wasted effort making it sort of look as good as I did because it's so dark you can't even see it. Maybe I should have used like a, a lighter bell trim for the inside of the, of the unit. So then it kind of stands out. But then that would show up more imperfections. So I'm happy with it the way it is. But thank you to everyone for coming along with me and sticking with me through this long van build. It's gone on a lot longer than I wanted it to but these things do take time. I just want to be out using the van now but it doesn't help that I've had so many problems with the engine and everything so I'm still waiting for the van to go back into the garage so that it can fit the new manifold so that the boost leak doesn't continue to happen and then hopefully I should have more power better mpg and it won't sound like i'm boiling a kettle thank you to all of these legends that donated to the channel by buying me a beer through the link in the description if you want to get your name up there you know what you need to do if the van is in the garage then i'll either be out in the old van next week or i might take a week off i probably won't take a week off it's, i just can't do it but other than that i'll uh i'll see you next week cheers mm -hmm.